Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to the matchup here in Group D, as we have Han Loyalist versus Jun Zhong Yi. Now this is going to be Han Loyalist's last match, he did get his first win last time. Let's see if we can end things with a 500 record here. And look at the composition, he's bringing back the comp he just ran with. We have He Jin with those four units of Imperial Lancer Cavalry that just did absolutely a ton of damage in the last match. And we have Huang Fuzong with those five Unbreakable Defender of Empire. And finally, John Ball joining in the fun with four Redeem Outlaw. And then on the red side, we have Xun Zhong Yi, who's bringing in Xun Yu with a mix of infantry and cavalry, Qingzhou unit for the infantry, spear guard, and then we have two northern lancer cavalry. For Ventral, we have four units of Protector Heaven, and then Dotrol makes appearance with both his unique unit, as well as two yellow dragons to boot. So a lot of very powerful infantry on the side of Xun Zhong Yi, not enough cavalry to go up against Han Loyalist for Imperial Lancer. But there are also abilities such as the Roar ability on Ventral, as well as Neutron's Show of Force, which actually has a 15 point morale hit as well. If those are hit on those cavalry, it could help swing things and then slowly use the cavalry to grind off the enemy. Cavalry total formation for those Yellow Dragon might help them advance in the face of potential health arrows, but it's going to be a very interesting matchup to see play out on the field, so let's see how things go. And looking at deployment, we have Han Loyalist with a pretty defensive setup here. A small scouting party, Northern Lancer Cavalry moving up, but the rest of Sun Zhong Yi forces are behind, and we'll see if he can get some poke in with Liu Chong early on. I doubt we'll see too much movement early on. Might be a dance around the forest to decide who's going where. So because Sun Yong has the Foresight ability, or a modification of it, Ancient Wisdom, we modify it to be Foresight. He's able to see everything, not much place to hide. Neutron should ride up and try to get some damage, even though there is the risk of getting chased down. Imperial Lancers are slow because of how much armor they have on them. Only 68 speed, so definitely can outrun that, not really a big deal. Let's see... We have a push... These are still hidden, so no idea where they are. Drown Ball is an interesting case. He's being brought a couple times. Increased speed is helpful. Way of Thunder, not so much. Lord of the Land, decent splash damage. Alright, we have Escort for show of force. And just run in one direction. Straight lines, straight lines, straight lines. Yep, and got the misses. Now's the time to charge. Full minute, a full minute. Let's charge. Cavalry? There is one crossbow unit that's a little gonna be a, like a bit pesky. They're gonna actually shred the cavalry pretty easily. Ooh, got the bow usage. Well, they're running in a very interesting direction, right? That can definitely be punished. Pulling back. No hell for arrow attempt. 70 armor, 75% armor, both very high armor stats. Oh, they see the cavalry. Maybe just smash into the cavalry? That's a good choice. Nothing can really help. You don't want to run too close to those crossbow unit. Yeah, just smash the cavalry. Ooh, hell of arrow. Mm. A bit wasteful, given they would be no match against this anyways. Crossbow coming in. A few shots there. Infantry still trying to get there. Yeah, there's no chance. There's just no chance right here. Got some bow usage. Oh, are we getting snipes on Xun Yu? This looks like a show of force. Yep, it's gonna hit. Got. 6k, 7k damage. The morale hit is what is actually surprising and something that can be exploited because this is 30. Can actually route Huang Fuzong with a combined hit. Smoke screen trying to cover the vans, but they kind of stopped. These cavalries are moving to a flank. Definitely can. There's not much on the back line. Buying time for more poke. That was on 60% armor. 
28% on John Ball. He would be a very vulnerable target. The bow has been used. I think Hudson got poked down by Ventral's bow and the crossbow here. Good use of those items. Gem Peacekeeper shooting a little bit. You can see the spear trying to cover the flanks. I mean, the infantry should just charge. There's not much. I guess the quality is too different. Oh, dismount. The roar is being used. Do we have any show of force at the same time? Oh, poor Ventral. Trapped. The horse is bumping his horse. You can see the morale difference here. Ooh, on the foot, Hellbarrow answered by show of force. Yeah, the morale, as we mentioned, was going to get tanked once that show of force get hit, but it's going to bounce back. The roar expired. They got a decent chunk of control. Being a champion, obviously, a lot of health on that. The effect is gone. Can you get a second roar? The cavalry just need to be decisive and just charge in here. There's only two spear unit aside from the protectors. Just go for it. Yellow dragon might be a good target too. They boosted the evasion. So that's going to work out pretty nicely. The old one taking this much poke is not great. But as long as he doesn't die, being unbreakable helps a ton. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Oh no. That's a lot of potential damage just gone. Would Xun Yu have been helpful? I think so. If they stayed in range with Inspiring Surge, you could get a lot more. Show force usage as well as the other ability usage on Ventral. I think Ventral is dead too. Three on foot versus one, so I'm just going to dismiss him. He's he's just dead. Cavalry's mucking things up here. They're going to pull back because once the spears get involved, you can see the protector, they back off. Yellow Dragons didn't get to charge, which kills pretty much all their value. Cavalry's going to try to regroup and probably seek out these Yellow Dragons from behind. Good flanking maneuver, not overcommitting too much, although there's a bit of traffic jam over here. The General should get back into the thick of things. Gem Peacekeeper, not going to be able to do too much. Yeah, chasing routed units really not their job, but they should get in here. Some of these exposed flanks. Ooh. Desperate charge. It's a delayed little shot there, but did enough. Not much charge on Chen Peacekeepers. Don't really have to worry about it. They did, they're probably both going to rout. Got more spears coming in to take care of the cavalry. They're going to jump in here. Yeah, I don't know what the cavalrys are trying to achieve here. Clearly just forgotten micro. That's fine. These attentions over here with the Hail of Arrow shot. They should leave the Tindro unit alone, though. There we go. Let's go. Let's go somewhere else. Any of these exposed flanks are decent charges. So we got a couple of the Lord of the Land being used. Eventually, the army loss is going to swing over. Wow. He just took that guy's glaive and stuck into the body. And now they run. That might be it. Yep. Gotta see quite a cool killing animation there. This guy right here. Yeah, Hezi meant business. The fight was very interesting. I think the combination Xun Zhong Yi was bringing here with Liu Chong and Wen Chou definitely can work. The timing was a little bit off. Xun Yu not going with the general feels a bit pointless. I feel like in a setup where you could bring any general since this is a blind pick situation, you want someone, I guess right now Turn of the Tide was what's being valued. But even in that case, you kind of want to engage the troop. Yellow Dragon not being used properly at all. They basically were standing there as frontline and got charged. They are basically charging units. If they don't get charged, there's no value on them. And they're very expensive 
for how fragile they are in terms of defensive stats. So get that charge out, dish the damage, and use them properly. Uh, Sun Yo here, the unit he brought, there was nothing... There's just no reason why he had to be the general, aside for turning the tide. I think the better value will probably be on Guo Jia, a general like that, where you can do Wisdom River. Uh, Inspiring Surge wasn't taken full advantage of as well. Guo Jia's case, you wouldn't have Inspiring Surge, but in this case, Inspiring Surge wasn't used, which is why I'm making that argument. Uh, you would probably brought him up a bit more. So if he was brought up together with the generals, or just so that when they're doing the poke, he's around to kind of shorten their cooldown so that you could do a bit more of those poking jobs. Um, I don't know how static defense you wanted to be against those Imperial Lancers. Once again, proven to be very capable if they find the right targets, as Han Loyalist is able to do two matches in a row. And that's gonna wrap up Han Loyalist's group play as he will end the stage two and two. We still have two very important matches coming up. Yulia is gonna be faced off against Trevinicus next. If Yulia wins, she secures the tiebreaker with Trevinicus for sure, even though she would just be 3 and 0 versus a 3 and 1 record. Doesn't matter if she loses her last match, she would have the tiebreak win over Trevinicus and win the group. If Trevinicus win, he would end up undefeated, and then Yulia will be battling for a shot at second place uh, with whatever record she ends up, or whatever time she ends up with. She'll be a 3 and 1 record if she wins that match. If not, she'll be dropped to 2 and 2. And we'll see if Xun Zhongyi can improve his record as well here. And this group is going to be a tight race for the top. Next match is going to determine it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And see you guys then. Bye.